and welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and talk about everything going on in the world of open source and uh, interesting golf clubs, if you were watching the live show, but no more talk about that. I'm Vince Stone, and that is one Jill Bryan in <laughs> L.A. and uh, from Britannia in Cambridge, man. Um, Hello. That's Pedro Mateus. Pedro, <laughs> how's the uh, Raspberry Pi store? <laughs> I have no idea. I haven't been there. Yet. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> it's kind of a running gag now. I can't go. <laughs> You're not getting out that easy. What have you been up to, man? We did the um, Google stream. We I don't think yep. we've ever done like a Yesterday. live coverage show. And by live coverage, ladies and gentlemen, we, we put the uh, actual show that you should be watching in a window and we talked over the parts that you were interested in. I highly recommend yeah, you was, check it out. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was good because it also saved me from having to do a game that I very much enjoyed, but it would be very boring to watch. So good on you, Google. Thanks for that. And good on you, Ven, for <laughs> reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? What's new, Joe? Yeah, well, I love I loved that broadcast, too, as well. Uh, it reminded me a lot of Leo Laporte doing <laughs> his live <laughs> keynotes, but LGC style. So that was really fun. I'm glad you guys did that. And um, still recovering from an amazing scale, of course, but looking forward to everyone seeing my interviews. They are coming, promise, soon. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so, yeah, no, yeah, no, it I will just be nice recovering. to see everyone at scale doing things. Yeah, <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> it was so Indeed. much fun. Indeed. Um, so. What do we got coming up this week? I got to do a little dancing around with OBS right quick. So <laughs> fill some air oh. for me, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. okay. <laughs> so so, so. <laughs> uh, I guess we can start up with the uh, Optane RAM, which uh, is coming up on the Linux kernel. There was a patch that was submitted not too long ago, but... Uh, Linus kind of put the kibosh on it. It's like, there's a couple of issues I have with the way you're naming things. This was Linus uh, to Intel because, yeah, it's uh, if you want proper Optane, Intel is the only one that can do it right now. It, mm -hmm. And the goal for this patch is uh, to allow people to who have Optane, let's say you're not using it completely for caching purposes and you still have a little bit left over let's say you need that little bit extra of ram and your nvme ssd isn't fast enough for uh, the swap mm -hmm. file or swap partition that you have going on there so use the optane it's still not as fast as ram but it is considerably faster than the nvme isn't that so, just a polite way of saying okay so you wanted to compile chromium Yes. <laughs> Chromium, LibreOffice, if you're compiling like everything. Yeah. <laughs> also, I, mean, and, I like the idea of it simply because you can get a, which sounds small, but a 32 gig Optane module for, you know, roughly $100. And if you're looking mm -hmm. at, you know, 32 gigs of 3,200 DDR4, geez, you know, that's 200. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Easy. And, you know, I think this is wonderful, too. And it makes sense because flash memory is a lot cheaper than traditional volatile RAM. And also, back in the day, I remember using hard drive uh, storage as a RAM drive in Windows to increase performance and rendering in 3D animation apps. And it actually worked really well. So even though the flash memory is slower, it, it's still very useful and it's still faster. Um, well, today's is, is much faster than using a traditional hard drive of course <laughs> so well yeah i think this is great <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah what linus said in response to uh dan williams from intel he like submitted the pull request it's like okay you can pull this and you'll get the infrastructure to allow persistent memory to be used as random access memory and Linus basically said i'm not pulling this until i get official intel clarification on the whole pmem versus rep moves versus machine check behavior last i saw it was deadly and didn't work and we have a whole mc safe memory copy thing for it in the kernel because repeat string inst uh, instructions don't work correctly on nvm e mm. um no way I'm exposing any users to something like that. We need a way to know when it works and when it doesn't, and only do it when it's safe. So 
Mm-hmm. Clearly, Linus, uh, in his much polite self, uh, much more polite self nowadays, uh, he has uh, made it very clear that he's not happy about Intel's previous exploits that caused him a lot of headaches. Because when uh, Spectre and Meltdown came out, it caused a lot of headaches to everyone involved in the kernel. So now he's being extra careful. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get into something that's kind of exciting. I know a lot of people have been waiting for yeah. it. Or Theron dropped this in our show notes. Mm-hmm. Firefox mm-hmm. 66. It's the first offer to release channel on, well, March 19th. So this is recent news. Two big things in this. Uh, they're very proud of the smooth scrolling. And a yes. <laughs> really big thing. Blocking autoplay, especially <laughs> the audio part <laughs> of the autoplay. Yeah. Also, they've enabled <laughs> AV1 support. Uh, which is kind of neat. If you don't know what that is, that's the new hotness and video codec technology. Yeah. But I updated it and it was kind of fun because the, I didn't mean to test it out, but the link to the story that not this particular page, because this is directly from Mozilla, but it was like Z, ZDNet or something like that. I had an autoplay video that was blocked and I, yep. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I was kind of happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> that autoplay no can't use... come soon enough. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't have to use plugins anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this is good. It's good progress, but I... Okay. When did this happen? Do either of you use script block? Oh, Def. I haven't used... Yeah. I haven't, I haven't used it's that in a while. currently disabled, but I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I use that on everything because that is a bit of a nuclear option. But when takeover pages, ads I can live with, okay, I figure that's mm-hmm. part of the transaction. But when takeover pages became a thing, you know, they, boom, hey, welcome to our page and we're going to drop down. Pop-ups the, 2.0. Right. <laughs> that's when I got script blocked and you know, I've just trained it so I don't ever have to worry about autoplay video or anything like that. I, I have a very... Mm-hmm old man way of viewing the web is what i'm saying it's very static <laughs> and not movie yeah <laughs> but it works yeah oh, that's awesome there's lots of other really good uh features in this new release as well um for us linux users the system title bar is hidden by default to match gnome guideline which is really great and the extension settings are now stored in a Firefox database instead of individual JSON files, which helps websites load a lot quicker. That's actually major. Um, that that will that definitely is going to help improve things. <laughs> That's not the yeah. only thing Firefox yeah. has been up to this week. No, no, it's no. not. <laughs> oh, something that we've kind of dealt with here at uh, this show with getting scale video. This is not really applicable to our okay home kaboom to go away. <laughs> <laughs> Free encrypted file sharing. And it's like, but Google Drive, that's a thing. Yeah, I get it. That's a thing. But there's no barrier to entry. You don't even need an account to do this. And you can send a yeah. gigabyte of data that's going to be encrypted. And Mozilla's like, hey. This is something we're not going to track. It's going to be a thing. And I don't know. I mean, it's neat if you're really concerned about your privacy, right? And yeah. And oh, if yeah. the end-to-end encryption thing sticks, they're, they're in the clear. Because <laughs> Mozilla's like, we're not going to look at it. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> that might get abused by the wrong people that you might think. <laughs> uh, I really want it to work out. I think it's good if you just need to send. Because if you do have an account, it's over a gig. A little bit more, yeah, not two and a whole and a half lot. gigs. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I've already sold what passed from my soul to the Googles. And yeah. <laughs> thank you, Google, when you did the Google Plus project, which you killed and you made all of my Google <laughs> accounts have Google accounts with Google accounts with those. Yeah. I have terabytes <laughs> of free G Drive storage and I even have a terabyte that I give them a couple of quid for. <laughs> but uh, it's friction free. That's good. You don't yeah. have to go to. I more than once I've had a game developer send me something from like Mega. I'm like, that's not happening. Oh yeah, I'm not downloading anything <laughs> from that. Sorry. I mean, I know it's legit, but it's not going to happen. So <laughs> also end to end decrypted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is good because Mozilla does smaller projects like this, and they don't normally make it out. You know, they don't become a real boy, but mm-hmm. just did, and I could see this getting used. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, back in the day, I, I we paid a lot of money to use Hytel in the animation industry. That does exactly this. Uh, the file sizes are smaller, but it, it's basically the same thing, and it's free. And um, I use, you know, Google Drive for all my things, too. But one of the issues with Google Drive is when you're trying to upload large files. It, it is slow. It, they, they do throttle it. So that is an issue when you need something done fast. But... Um, other than that, I, I pretty much rely on Google Drive myself, but I do want to try out this uh, the Firefox yeah, sharing. And Google Drive <laughs> is great uh, if you want to store multiple files and yeah. only share a couple of them. This one exactly. is just straight up for file sharing. You upload a yeah. file, then send the <laughs> link to someone else, and the um, decryption key is included in the link that you sent to that person. So once they get it, it's decrypted. Done. Yeah. <laughs> and... Awesome. We've just got to be honest. Uh, I know I've talked about this before. I use Google Drive in a service like this. I will definitely <laughs> use yeah. because sometimes sending your data halfway across the country and back is the best way to get it from your com one computer to the other in the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> True story. Okay, I do it all Gnome. the time. <laughs> three point three two. Jill, this is your story yeah. because Pedro can't help himself when he talks about gnome. Oh, <laughs> no. gnome three point dot three two has been released with a lot, lot of promised updates now included. And actually, as we talked about in January, the big app icon redesign comes with a radical new icon style and new guidelines for app developers featuring scalable vector icons for GNOME. And this has been officially released now with GNOME 3.32. And uh, that's really, really great. Um, there are a lot of other new features, too, with, with GNOME as well. <laughs> I know, yeah. I saw that uh, mm -hmm. right at the top of the article from, uh, this is just blogs.gnome.org. You can find all this in our show notes after the fact, but like really proud. And like the first thing you see is buttons are more rounded and have softer shadow border. I guess <laughs> know your audience, Pedro, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's uh, the thing about gnome borders and I will... Oh, <laughs> I will tear them a new one every chance I get. Hey, is... I'm sorry, Pedro will now take in an uncalled for swipe at Gnome for your viewing enjoyment. <laughs> yes, that stupid, stupid title bar that they basically force everyone to not have their own title bars uh, so that they can introduce that stupid massive thing that takes like 50 <laughs> pixels to display the window title. What's mm -hmm. the point? Seriously. <laughs> okay. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. Weren't you telling me earlier that they finally fixed a bug in your favorite waifu KDE that caused it not to crash when you plugged in a controller? It didn't crash the whole thing. It just crashed the system. <laughs> well, it crashed half of the system tray. It was just a lib app indicators. Uh, Pedro, the... that's like saying you have the good type of cancer. <laughs> Pretty sure I have a couple of benign tumors, but we'll get to that. Uh... <laughs> The no, it's uh the thing that they introduced, which was really nice, was uh non uh integer based GTK scaling, which means scaling for all of the elements in GTK, not just the fonts, which is something that for all its flaws and all its faults, KDE has actually done really well for several months now, uh, which is proper floating point scaling. You can do percentile scaling really easily with KDE and GNOME has only just introduced 150 and mm. 175 scalings. Really? But they've really? also introduced it for Wayland, which is neat. And um, several no, for improvements Wayland, they, they to actually the did uh, data structure. So noticeable frame rate improvement because that's apparently the thing you weirdos have to yeah. I'm talking to you, KDE. I'm talking to you. <laughs> I'm worried about how many FERPs you're getting on your desktop. I don't know. What I didn't get to say yeah. as I was uh, flailing around trying to figure out our audio issue at the beginning of the show was mm -hmm. I took the Pepsi challenge with enlightenment because I'm yeah. really trying to squeeze all the extra performance out of this box right now. <laughs> E22, it's good in theory, not stable. Back to the whole thing of like anything crashing or anything like that. More power to you, brave soldiers that are out there with mm -hmm. your gnomes and your KDEs and anything that's not XFC. <laughs> It's just stable. It works. I don't have to. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, the Wayland scaling, they actually do proper 
like floating yeah. point scaling. You can increase it by 10%. You can go up 10%. You can scale it down 10%. That's good. That's something that should have been there from the beginning, not integer-based scaling for however many years has it been. So they're fixing it. <laughs> yeah. And are you upset mm -hmm. that they're fixing it, Pedro? No, I, I'm really happy that they're fixing are it. you physically it capable yeah. of enough. saying, good job. <laughs> <laughs> it's Gnome. They have a lot to do to earn a yes. good job from me. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, ladies and gentlemen. I tried. Oh, okay. Um, let, let's quit talking about no. No, I'm just kidding, Pedro. We're going to talk yes. more about Gnome now. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. And and speaking of Gnome, and I'm taking the Gnome Pepsi challenge as we speak. Um, now we have WireGuard implemented in Gnome's Network Manager API GUI, CLI, and Applet, and this is a game changer for the average Linux user who wants to use WireGuard's powerful VPN tunneling services. And th this is, uh, I thought, you know, this is this is actually huge. Um, not only does this give you the ability for VPN tunneling, but the added benefit of DNS and firewall D setup as well. And what's really cool is you can import your existing WireGuard profiles into Network Manager. And that's just, it, that's great. This is just going to make the, ent the entry into using WireGuard that much easier. So that's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty neat. Um, configuring WireGuard in your network manager, you're going to get the other features beyond, you know, just your plain WireGuard tunnel setup. Uh, you'll get DNS, uh, firewall D setup in a consistent manner. And, uh, oh, right. This is not in the kernel, is it, Pedro? No. no, it requires yeah. an extra module. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's the annoying thing because um, I know that Network Manager can already pull open VPN um, connections directly without needing anything else. So, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe we're just waiting. I, was... I, I have uh, private internet access set up through yeah. OpenVPN in Network Manager. It's literally, I click, oh, look, now I'm connected to a VPN. And then I click again, now I'm disconnected. Yeah. <laughs> but I want it in the kernel, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, there were talks of introducing some VPN yeah. service into the kernel. It'll be was in it there. WireGuard? I don't remember. Yeah, it, it was. <laughs> um, it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's coming. Now... <laughs> Pedro likes to take um, unneeded swipes at GNOME, but he does like to heap praise on his desktop, his favorite one that is still around despite him using it. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> despite my best efforts, Solus <laughs> is still around. And they finally decided, you know what? There's That's enough nines. Let's just bump it up to Solus 4. We're and losing it's all of our jokes. Fortitude. We got to get something. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they called it Fortitude, and basically, it's Solus is a rolling release distro. So if you're already running Solus and you're all caught up on the updates, you're already uh, running Solus four, and you already have all the goodies. The this edition, uh, if you download the ISO right now, you get Firefox sixty five, LibreOffice six point two, Rhythmbox three point four point three, and Thunderbird sixty point five. So. All the current versions, very nice indeed. Uh, they also include kernel for 2016, which brings all the hardware enablement stack, especially if you have a Vega AMD video card. That will actually work really, really, well, really, really well. There we go. And uh, it comes with uh, FFmpeg 4.1.1 out of the box it, with NVENC support. Very important. Uh, the software center has also been updated. Uh, they have improvements for the uh, budgie desktop, which is like the big thing. I just would like to Solus. take a moment and interrupt and say thank you to the Souls development team for including NVN code. Mm, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike you, Ubuntu. Other people. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, <laughs> it's also the first release that comes with the uh, with a publicly available KDE ISO. It's still in beta. Uh, the original work was done by Peter O'Connor, if I'm getting his name right. Uh, but the currently there's a new maintainer that's working on it and. You know, as someone who 
kept ragging on KDE for how buggy and crashy it was, version 5.15.2 in Solus has actually been, for the most part, pretty solid. Except for the uh, system tray crashing when I plugged in the DS4. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, this release is actually huge. And this is actually, this is something cool that I have been waiting for. There's now Pavu control features in the new Budgie sound input and sound output widgets. That's that's really great. Now we have, uh, you know, per app uh, sound mani- manipulation, and it's 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 actually very similar looking to uh, Pavu control. So that you know, for us here at LGC, that is really cool. And because I I use I use the Budgie um, desktop and uh, Solus on one of my portable laptops. <laughs> it's not really that portable, although it's huge. It's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. Um, I was a little bit worried uh, about Solus, but it seems like they've gotten everything back together and moving forward. Yeah. So, yeah, despite yeah. Uh, that little bit of a hiccup with Ike, right. uh, it seems that yeah. they've all uh, sort of landed in their stride and they're keeping going, each to their own. So, yes. good on them. <laughs> good on them. Deepen. Yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> this is really, really wonderful. Deepin switches to Debian Stable in 15.9.2 beta from Debian Unstable. And uh, developers thought this would be a really good move. And I completely th- agree because honestly, many users like me who use Debian use it because of its stability and reliability. This Debian Stable is the logical choice. And, you know, if, if they want to be use this distro and mission critical, it's yeah, very important, definitely. Yeah, and it's it's deep, and it's the distro that has all of the uh, mainstream mm. media saying it's the prettiest Linux distro out there. <laughs> yes, uh, honestly, it <laughs> if you set the like the little dock at the bottom to the panel uh, display, yeah, it looks exactly like Windows Ten. Mm-hmm. It's just not a bad thing. I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people complain <laughs> a lot about Windows Ten, but. The looks aren't exactly the main point of concern. But as far as like uh, theme integration goes, both GTK and Qt apps actually inherit the theme properly, which is something that doesn't happen in 99% of uh, the other desktop environments. So good on the uh, Deep and team for that. So yeah, it's mm-hmm. it looks good. And the uh, move to Debian stale, uh, stable, probably going to help them more. One of the things we need to point out, um, moving to Debian stable, the updates for that kind of come at the speed of smell. And yeah. Yes, but they have their own repos, but, too. But I can, yeah. Read, yeah, I can read what I put in the show notes, too. You want to? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the, the team behind Debian, they say that they're going to take a charge of a couple of the more commonly updated things, which that could also be a bad thing. Mm-hmm. It could be, but mm-hmm. it's probably a good idea for stuff like Mesa. Mm-hmm. If you want to, yeah. say, run Deepin on a brand mm-hmm. new laptop, because, yeah, you want all the pretties. Yeah, having good Mesa support, a new-ish kernel, it comes, I think it's 4.15 on this mm-hmm. release. 4.15, you're getting Mesa. beat by Canonical. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's 4.15, <laughs> the 4.15 kernel and Mesa 18.2? I think something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds right. It's pretty good. I mean, there's definitely some eye candy in there. I'd have to spend a lot of time making it ugly enough to satisfy my use case. You can't. (laughs) That's the thing. They don't give you the option to turn off 90% of the bling. (laughs) Um, It's Debian based. So, um, cash purge. You can nuke the desktop environment. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. (laughs) I'm not above this, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We're going to get into a slice of pie, but first we need to thank the lovely people making this possible. And they're doing that Mm -hmm. over at patreon.com forward slash Linux gamecast where you can uh take part in our freeware project where we just give everything away from free I'm like hey if you like it kick us a few quid um if you want some other ways to do that we have linuxgamecast.com forward slash support we got amazon links humbles if you're into the games we got paypal cash on the barrel and magic internet money but we always like to take a hot second thank anybody who's increased their pledge or uh, kicked us yeah. a few shuffles 
where we can be like, yay, we're rich, kind of. I don't know. Or like, <laughs> Jill, who do we have Aww. this week? Oh, thank you, Joel, for increasing your pledge. Your name I've been seeing in our credits for a long time. So oh, that's thank right. you so much. <laughs> we will publicly shame you and let the world know that you support this show. <laughs> and you've been supporting us for a long, long time. And, uh, yes. <laughs> sure I have. It's been awesome. And you let us do a lot of things like yesterday, Tuesday, we were able to uh, cover yep. the YouTube announcement. We might do more of that Yay. if uh, things line up. And Thursday, <laughs> Jordan has his, whatever he's going to call it, probably more adventures in the borderlands. That's interesting. And Friday, mm -hmm. we like to misappropriate company hardware and get everyone together and uh, use it <laughs> to play multiplayer video games. It's kind of fun. Saturday, big show. That's the thing. And one of the things I'm currently working on is kind of walking everybody through what it's like once record is stopped. So mm -hmm. I'll get one of those uh, posted up for everyone to watch eventually. Maybe not today, though. I got a lot of crap to do. Anyway, mm -hmm. let's get into it. A slice of pie. A slice of pie. Ooh. Uh, we're actually having a, a discussion <laughs> at work about uh, what was the uh, highest number of pie that they've managed to calculate now. Google just mm. recently did it for fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, speaking of Google, uh, they have uh, released the new dev board, which uh, if you remember a while ago, there was this big announcement that Google was going to release their own processor. And it turned out it was just going to be a TPU and it was going to mainly mm -hmm. be focused Vegeta, on machine learning. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, mostly machine learning and AI stuff. And, but the internet still, as a whole, had a collective brown moment because <gasps> Google releasing hardware. And yesterday we had, oh, they're releasing a new controller with Chromecast functionality. But mm -hmm. yeah, this new dev yes. board. Uh, Which I called has... in the first three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, this uh, this particular dev board, it comes with the aforementioned TPU. It's the NXP IMX 8M SoC, which is a quad-core Cortex-A53 with the Cortex-M4F. Uh, it also has integrated GC7000 Lite graphics. So it is very much on par or similar to the, um, the Raspberry Pi, but the application here is meant to be very, very different. It can also, it gets a lot more power and the uh, TPU actually puts out a significant amount of heat and it's the teeny tiny little fan. Uh, and yeah, the, they are building this to be more of an embedded uh, machine learning application rather than just a prototype board like you've come to expect from the Raspberry Pi itself. So I I don't know. It remains to be seen what people will do with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was thinking that I, I think what was beautiful about it was the modularity. So it's easily upgradable. Um, so you can easily upgrade the CPU and GPU. Uh, that that that's that's kind of a game changer actually <laughs> for industrial <Yeah. laughs> applications and whatnot. And yeah, like Pedro was saying, you can SSH in into into the curl board, um, and so it's it doesn't really have a a GUI yet. It's 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 meant for uh, network control and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's pretty neat, man. I want to give it like mm -hmm. a little cowboy hat so it can be like, cool. <laughs> uh, don't worry, yes. they'll release a release of a uh, Fuchsia OS. No, I legitimately want the hat attachment. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> It'll be brilliant. Okay, uh, little bitty tiny things. NVIDIA Jetson mm -hmm. Nano brings AI muscles to palm size dev kit. Not to be left mm. out, uh, the Kudex GPU, 472 G flops, gigaflops, a performance uh, mm. TDP at 5 to 10 watts, 4 gigajoules of RAM, micro SD, HDMI, EDP 1.4, uh, USB 3, and gigabit Ethernet, real gigabit Ethernet. Uh, mm -hmm. It's going to arrive in June for 129 watt stinky caches, only available for enterprise customers or in bulk quantities of $1,000 or more kind of making this aimed at businesses or schools wanting to tinker with AI on the cheap. Mm -hmm. And we really need to ask the genuine hard hitting question, which is not answered in this article. How well does it run Plex? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because this is a compute module. It's a bigger one than yeah. what we're used to seeing with the Raspberry Pis, but this is a compute module. Mm -hmm. So say you put this at the back of a TV, it's like, okay, now you run Plex. That that's a very pertinent question. 
$129. It better run, Blacks. <laughs> it's an nvidia yeah. soc yeah yeah. Nvidia games. yeah i was just gonna say yes <laughs> yep the half-life 2 on android on the uh shield tablet works great oh, i want my door <laughs> fortress to look crisp <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of neat the only uh thing that's really genuinely thing is having to order it in quantity so it might be a little more yeah. difficult to get our hands on but something to yeah. play with nonetheless indeed mm -hmm. right we got some feedback how do they do that? oh yes we do we got a couple of points of feedback and if you'd like to send some of it our way so we can have you know we can spend a bit more time talking to you at the end of the show you can do that go to linksgamecast.com hit the contact button fill out the form uh, make sure you select LWDW from the available options, and that's basically all you need to do. No more annoying captures to get in your way, I guess. And this week we have first up is uh, Erta. It's talking about uh, navigators and with regards to Chrome mm -hmm. incompatibility. It's just like what Ven says. Stop feeding his ego. <laughs> we had this <laughs> BS with IE and Navigator in the 90s, and we're having to deal with the same BS with Firefox and Chrome. I have used all of those Ubuntu-related network commands. Okay, that second bit was about all of the uh, network commands that you could use to like disconnect and reconnect, like the IF down, mm -hmm. IF up, uh, the system CTL one, and all the others. But uh, I guess the first one is about the... What was it about? Because <laughs> I honestly can't remember. Jill? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I don't remember. Where, but we, we were talking about this last week. How uh, Different yeah, types of fire... browsers, rendering engines. I don't know. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've talked about oh, that a couple of I times. Just spaced, yeah, we talked about it a couple of times last week as, as well as this week. <laughs> I'm going to make well, both of you I... sit right there until oh, you remember. Oh my gosh, I'm embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Honestly, I I can't. I mean, uh, <laughs> I am navigator in the 90s. And I'm screeching through with... the show notes. And if I find yes. this before you remember. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> well, there, there was... <laughs> there was the history Skype, of maybe? Firefox in Microsoft in, that IE. was going to be oh okay it could be yeah it could be the Microsoft thing about using uh, Chrome for the new edge Skype for web on Linux that was the thing I believe okay all right oh, oh, oh yeah okay yeah, 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 yeah. okay user agents yeah there was talk about yeah. user agents and limiting it to specific <laughs> engines yes 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 I remember How now. Embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> we had no problem with the second point but the first one mm -hmm. <laughs> and by our powers combined we went and looked at the show notes <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> but yeah it's uh Microsoft <laughs> pulling that and artificially limiting it because I, they don't want to deal with it or they're effectively trying to kill it. Well, the time will tell, I guess. <laughs> Microsoft's going to Microsoft. Yeah. 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 I, it, it, it is the law of a, if they do anything good, they have to do something uh, monumentally dumb. So mm -hmm. <laughs> everything in balance. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. I know this is not a gaming show, but uh, wh where do we sit if the Master Chef collection comes to Linux too? Uh, I guess mm -hmm. we're waiting on the whitelist on those. No, no. And what if they're like no native binaries? Uh, hmm. then Microsoft gets my money. <laughs> oh. Because that's the kind of yeah. behavior that I want to reward. Oh, okay. yes, yes, bring more games to Linux. <laughs> All right. All yes. Right. And it's an Epic Store. No, it's going to be on Steam. Steam kind of... Like, yeah, it's going to be on Steam. Yeah. Definitely. But you need an Xbox account. <laughs> no, no. What? No, you need the account. You just don't have okay, to pay for don't. Xbox Live, but you need the Xbox account. How dare I challenge our Windows expert? <laughs> Pedro Mateus. Uh, <laughs> that was Scott, actually. Scott was the one who told us that. <laughs> Up next, uh, Mike writes, Point. Yay! I can't possibly believe that anything's worse than Microsoft SharePoint, Pedro. <laughs> That's a dark, dark reality, period. And Penguicon. 
They serve beer to a bunch of athletics gigs and costumes, question mark. It sounds intriguing. Been to Track and Con. Can you imagine the smell? It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Another excellent rumor. Oh, thank you, Mike G. <laughs> Yeah, and true that. At, at, actually, at scale, they they serve beer to a bunch of Linux geeks, and some of us, uh, uh, some of us are actually in costume. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in, always in my penguin outfit. So. Or and hello. Yes, <laughs> Jill. Not everyone considers getting clothed a costume. <laughs> in fact, there are a bunch of people who consider taking their clothes off a costume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, I like the idea of Ping. We had chips. Go back and watch that if you didn't know. Yeah, yeah. told it's us great. about Ping and Quan <laughs> last <laughs> week. And I mean, it even has like special hard mode because where's it located, Pedro? Yeah. Oh, it's in uh, Michigan. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> getting there. Missouri, no. <laughs> Missouri, Michigan, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Which doesn't exist until we no. spoke. Uh, <laughs> I don't can't remember. It looks fun. My uh, thanks, everybody, gone. for showing up. <laughs> showing, joined us live or after the fact. Uh, we're going to roll some credits. Get out of here. We're not going to do any better than that. Maybe we'll be a little better next week. And maybe we'll have some footage, Alan, uh, to share with you <laughs> from scale. During the show. Until then, um, yeah. Let's do those credits, maybe. Oh, yeah. come yeah. on, credits. <laughs> yeah, and Trego, Treggy Penguin Con is, is I know it's awesome. I'm, I'm going to go one of these years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at our beautiful executive producers. Our Theron and Foxdog, Andrew S. Empty, the Atomic Ass, Mike G, Barbrandt, drummer. <laughs> Come on, another round. <laughs> no. Take it from here, Pedro. <laughs> no. I will say that every single one of those names represents someone who is genuinely insane and very fiscally irresponsible. Fiscally, and we love yes. you for that. Fiscally, yes. I love them all. I type, the, I type this from memory every week, so dynamite. Yes. <laughs>